Hi everyone. Today we're going to build this little project. It's an electronic clock. It can be a countdown timer or stopwatch or indeed just a normal clock. It's just a cheap kit that I bought off the internet. The links will be in the description below and it's very simple and an ideal starter or introductory kit uh, to those new into electronics. So let's get started. So let's see what we've got inside the packet. Our display, little buzzer, microcontroller, Some resistors, capacitors, little transistor, crystal, capacitors for the crystal, another capacitor, diode, another diode, and a little uh, connector block. And of course, our circuit board. So, quite helpfully, the circuit board is well silk screened and marked up. Not just the component identifiers, as in R5, D2, but also with the values of the uh, resistors and also the capacitors, including marking up on the capacitor here, C5, of 104. That'll be the marking that's on the actual capacitor itself. So that's very helpful. So let's have a look at the instructions. Let's move this to one side. And have a look at our instructions. Written, of course, in uh, translated English, let us say. So, assembly note. SCM test procedures have been entered. Direct chip socket weld you can plug into the assembly where there are a few things to note per polarity, such as electrolytic capacitors, exclusion, buzzer, LED and rectifier diodes. In order to avoid loading the wrong, oh be careful not to solder joints weld. The back installation diagram and schematic. That all makes perfect sense. A power supply, 3.7 to 5.5 volts, that's fine. I'm going to power this off a little USB power bank. And then we've got a setting a methods and uh, adjustments of actually how to use uh, this. A handy parts list on the other side. We have an exclusion. I think they are referring to this little uh, multiple resistor uh, bar, a single in line resistor package. I think that's what that's referring to. Electrolytic capacitor, ceramic diode, Nixie tube. That, that's very helpful. It would be lovely if these were Nixie tubes. Uh, they are really, really nice. In fact, I have some. I want to make a project for, at some point, uh, making a Nixie clock, just like everybody else on YouTube does. But this is not a Nixie tube. This is just a seven segment LED display block. A crystal oscillator. Our microcontroller, which is an STC, probably a knockoff. And then we have the circuit diagram. Let's zoom down on that a little bit. For those of you who want to uh, take a screenshot of that, that's our circuit diagram. So let's start. Uh, where we always start with the smallest components and those are of course are these uh, resistors and then we'll use the get the diodes in as well so these are 4k7 resistors let's just see on our circuit board what sort of bend they need on them okay you can get little bending jigs. I even have one. But 
when you've only got a few to do, you can get it close enough. It's simply a case of popping them in and then I just bend the blades on over underneath. You can do it one at a time and solder them and then clip the leads. I find it's just as easy to do a few of the same value. Of course, the resistors don't care which way around they go. And then we can just solder them in place. As you see, I keep turning the board around. I just find that because I'm right-handed, it just seems to work easier for me to, to work just from one side of a component, if at all possible. And on a small board like this, it most certainly is possible. And we can just trim these leads off. The next two components to go in are these two little uh, diodes. I think they're 1N4007, just standard rectifier diodes. So these ones are the ones that we have to observe the correct polarity. So we can see on the diagram on the circuit board there's a stripe which corresponds to the stripe in the on the diode package. Double check. Yep, they're okay. The next smallest component is probably the little capacitors for the crystal. These two little yokes here. Now with these, this time I will have a little check just to make sure they're sitting all right before I solder up the second of each capacitor, second lead of each capacitor. It's not taking long this one. Let's, uh, let's get the socket for the chip next. We've helpfully wrapped it in tape. You may be able to make out but one end has got a notch and the other end hasn't. The end with the notch goes towards pin one and there's also a notch as you can see on the silk screen on the circuit board. That fit very nicely in there. So we just solder one pin on this and then we can uh, then we can just make sure that this socket is sitting nicely before we do any others. Yeah that seems to be Still sitting nice and flush. 
Now you don't have to do these sort of like in diagonal soldering. It's just a, a method that I've been using over the years to make sure that you don't get too much heat building up in the part, the circuit, an integrated circuit or chip carrier, socket, whatever component it is, if it's got many leads, you can actually build up quite a bit of heat over time if you just go one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Whereas if you alternate where you are soldering, it kind of spreads that heat out a little bit. Hopefully prevents it from doing any damage. Right. I think next we shall put in the this other capacitor. Now you can see with this one that the holes in the circuit board are, don't quite line up with how wide the leads are. And you have to be careful with ceramic uh, capacitors like this, little discs of ceramics, that if you try and stress them too much you can actually crack the ceramic uh, package. So on this one I'm not actually pushing it all the way down, uh, trying to force it to get as close as possible to the circuit board because I'll probably end up damaging it if I did that. Next I'm going to put in this little bank of resistors. Actually before I do that I just want to make sure I can get it back out again. I just want to test this, make sure that there's not a specific way around that it needs to go. It looks like on here there's uh, one hole here that is sort of marked and on the resistor itself it looks like there's a dot on the other light hitting it you may be able to make that out a dot just up against that pin. I would presume that that is the common pin all of these will have, I think it's 470 ohms, but let me just get my meter to check this. So this is where I try not to put my big fingers in the way, but we'll probably not succeed. So I've got the black up against that common pin. There we go, 460k. 468k, 468. So, yes, that is the common. to all of these. It goes to the little square indicated on the silk screen on the circuit board. So, there we go, we got the dot. Is the common and then the rest just pushes in there. It's quite a snug fit that. Let's double check its positioning before we solder the rest of these. Yeah. 